Good morning, traders. James uh, Thorpe on the uh, Bull versus Bear webinar this morning for Trade Day. Um, stepping in for Steve. Actually, I think I'm going to be stepping in twice this week today, and you'll have me back on Thursday. So apologies in advance. <laughs> um, it is Tuesday, September the 20th, and um, it's going to be a blazing hot day today in Chicago, but it looks like this is the last day of summer as the temperature starts to drop tomorrow and for the rest of the week. I thought the summer was over. I went to see the Northwestern game, not last week, the week before. Sat in the stands and got sunburned. Great. Managed to avoid sunburn all summer. And then uh, just in, as we headed into September, saw one football game, sat in the stands for three hours and got sunburned. Wonderful. Anyway, so Tuesday, September the 20th, let's get on with it. Um, let's start with some housekeeping, first of all. Actually, um, we might get some reverb as I uh, move over to the trade day dating room here, trade, uh, trade day trading room. Um, the activity feed, if we can keep this, um, uh, keep this, not put support questions in the activity feed, people, if you can, if you have questions on support, questions about how we do things at Trade Day, email us at support at tradeday.com. That's where you'll find your uh, fastest answer. Of course, a lot of our questions or a lot of your questions will be answered in the FAQ. So go to the FAQ first. You can find a link to the FAQ um, at the bottom of the page. Ooh, scroll all the way down. FAQs here or just visit tradeday.com. Um, but let's try and keep the activity feed uh, for site announcements, uh, market commentary, or if our traders have any questions about trading, we can see here that Anna uh, Hobbs she sparked a very good question, uh, very good chat um, around, uh, I, I guess, around risk management, not risk management and discipline, and um, it sparked a nice sort of twenty odd uh, comments on you know things that might be able to help us. So that's really what the activity is there for: site announcements. Market announcements, heads up, that type of thing, um, talking about the role, and really for traders to chat amongst themselves. Support questions, please head over to support at tradeday.com or check out the FAQs first. All right, thank you. Let's go into the um, daily economic data release calendar. So, the daily economic data release calendar is light this week before Wednesday. Although saying that, there is, uh, let's have a look if I can just expand this a little bit. There we go. We have Canadian CPI this morning. Now, um, I think that, um, you know, it's, I think it's just like worth looking at Canada. Normally we don't, but right, obviously at the moment, the focus is on inflation, what central bankers around the world are doing, and um, there was a surprise this morning out of northern uh, out of northern Europe. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, but you know, so we've got Canada coming up now. Canada doesn't normally really impact the U.S. markets. I think I have an opinion on what their Fed is going to do tomorrow, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, and I think what Canada does today will not affect the course of the Federal Reserve tomorrow. But I, I want to see personally. I want to see what happens in 56 minutes now. Uh, in Canada to see you know, what their reaction is, um, um, you know, what their CPI numbers doing, right? Is it coming out hot? You know, is it continuing to come out hot? Or are they starting to see a stopping out of the number and a slowing of the number? If they are, then that might give central bankers around the world some sort of modicum of breathing space or confidence that tighter monetary policy is working, that inflation's starting to come under control. Maybe it's topped out. Maybe if it's topped out in Canada, it's topped out in the United States. That kind of thing, right? That's what we're looking for. So a hot CPI number in Canada um, is really, you know, if, as, long, as long as it's not super hot, of course, but if it comes out 
as as previous or slightly worse than expected, then I think what we'll uh, we'll see is you know not a big impact on the U.S. markets. But if it comes out a lot better than expected, then I think we'll see a nice strong rally uh, into the U.S. market. Um, even though the Fed won't change its policy tomorrow, you know what I think will happen is the market will perceive that the Fed won't be as as aggressive going forward. Um, obviously, there will be some sort of sit. Um, tight, sit tight and wait to see what happens with the US inflation data. But remember, markets are always trying to sort of second guess what's coming, right? And so we'll see, I think, a, a rally in US stocks if the uh, Canadian CPI comes in cooler than expected. So that's kind of what we're watching this morning. There is some housing data building permits uh, in 55 minutes, um, normally tier three. But we are in what I like to call like the holding pattern. You know, if you think of a, an airport where the planes are coming into land, um, you know, they're asked to circle in a holding pattern until the runway is clear. Uh, and I think that's what markets are in right now ahead of the FOMC in a holding pattern. I don't see the markets going up or down either way in any sort of significance. I don't see traders establishing new positions ahead of the FOMC tomorrow. Um, and, uh, you know, and I think what we saw in the last, uh, uh, in yesterday, Sunday and Monday, was just a little bit of short covering um, ahead of this meeting. So, you know, that's really, I think, where we are in a holding pattern. The markets are generally likely to be somewhat quiet and chop around and, um, you know, ahead of the FOMC. Uh, but we'll take a look at the charts in a minute, unless this Canadian uh, CPI data comes in significantly cooler than expected. So that's really uh, a look at the economic calendar today. We've got Christine Lagarde speaking at 1 p.m. Um, you know, if you're trading any of our currency, if you're trading the euro currency or any uh, sort of euro denominated uh, futures products. Um, and, you know, again, you know, Eurozone is you know, one of the la world's largest uh, economies that we look at uh, to give us a sort of a sense of what the central banks are are thinking, what inflation's doing. Um, obviously, the situation in the UK and Europe is slightly different to the US with the war in Ukraine causing pressure um, uh, on, that, on that Eurozone, specifically because of the supply chain issues and the issues with energy. Nevertheless, you've got Japan, you've got what's going on in China. Um, that's always interesting, but Japan, Eurozone, UK and the US are, you know, are sort of the main four economic regions that you know as a trader we watch um to sort of get some sort of signals of what you know what's the general sentiment amongst the central bankers which is where the focus is in controlling inflation at the moment okay so that's a look at the daily economic calendar um looking at the um overnight news good morning clinton thank you for joining us um there is she isn't a lot in the morning news, you know, I mean, it's always a big sign that, you know, fundamentals, daily fundamentals aren't driving price when, you know, the headline is PepsiCo ends Pepsi 7-Up production in Russia months after promising halt over Ukraine. You know, there's like that's not hardly sort of uh, e-mini or, or, or NASDAQ or crude oil or gold moving news, is it? So, you know, there's not a great deal coming out of the uh, uh, news wires overnight that's going to sort of impact prices. But there were two things that I just wanted to point out. So Sweden lifts interest rates by a full percentage point with more to come. OK, now. Sweden, like everywhere else, facing the same problems, hot inflation, using the same tools, interest rates to try and control this inflation. Interestingly, in uh, Sweden, this was unexpected to move uh, interest rates by one full percent, 100 basis points. Let's have a quick read of the article. Sweden's central bank raised interest rates on Tuesday by larger than expected full percentage point to 1.75 and warned of more to come over the next six months. Inflation hit 9%, a 30-year high in August, as the effects of the soaring energy prices spread through the economy and has overshot the Riksbank's forecast. Now, the Riksbank is uh, Sweden's central bank. The rate hike was the biggest since the inflation target was adopted in 93, blah, 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 blah. 
when rates go up. Obviously, interest uh, costs go up for many households. There's some commentary there. Um, and I think there was something from the Reeks Bank here talking about how you know, inflation's got away from their predictions and how that they're going to sort of settle into higher rates for longer. Markets also see policy peaking around 3.5%. Um, I thought there was a little bit about the Riggs Bank talking about, you know, where they sit in terms of in terms of their longer-term outlook. Well, I just wanted to point this out because, you know, we are going into the Fed tomorrow and there has been talk of the Federal Reserve doing a full um, 100 basis points, a full percentage point rate hike. Now, the markets are generally speaking are priced in three uh, three quarters of a point, 75 basis points. There is talk of a full percentage point. And my opinion on this is that they're not going to do it. Right. So one of the Federal Reserve's mandates, obviously, or one of their official guiding principles, let's say that, is not to surprise markets where they can. And, um, you know, they've pretty much telegraphed that the rates are going to be aggressive and, you know, the vast majority of the market expects three quarters of a point. And if you think about the inflation number last week, it wasn't like inflation's running away from us. It Printed hot, it was hotter than expected, but it wasn't way above expectation. Okay, it just didn't come off. And if you think about what the market was doing prior to the um, um, the data release last week, it was rallying into it because people were on traders and investors were expecting that inflation had topped out and that there was going to be you know a fairly significant. I don't, how do I define significant? I don't really know. But the interest rate, sorry, the inflation rate number last week was going to print slightly softer than it did, right? Softer than it did. So the markets got ahead of themselves. They're excited that, you know, maybe peak inflation's uh, come and gone and that, you know, the Fed doesn't need to be as aggressive and they can switch from focusing on controlling prices to making sure that they, we maintain growth and that, you know, the, the Federal Reserve's stance on interest rates won't be as, aggress as aggressive. So that was what the market was really trying to or was signaling going into the hot inflation number last week in the US. Um, and of course, it prints hot, but it doesn't print, it, for me, it didn't print, you know, it wasn't like nine and a half, 10, 10 and a half percent. It was kind of pretty much where it was the month before, you know, signaling that, you know, perhaps it hasn't turned, but it still is not running away from us, right? So, and, and, and on the back of that, why should the Federal Reserve change its monetary stance now? Why should it surprise the markets with a full percent? If that number had printed hot, really hot, then we may see a full percentage point. But right now, my feeling, this is just my opinion, remember, is that the um, um, Federal Reserve is going to stick uh, and, and raise rates by three quarters of a point, 75 basis points. And, um, and you know, that's what's going to come out tomorrow. Um, uh, through the FOMC announcement. And so I don't think, I forgot where I was going with this. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I don't think this Sweden, you know, lifting rates surprised by a full percentage point is really going to impact the market too much. It may have like raised a few eyebrows. Like, oh, you know, the, the central banks do have the capacity to surprise us here. But I don't think that's what's going to happen in the US. You know, it's, it may, may create some softness in, in um, you know, we saw yesterday the markets bounce. As I said, I think that's just short covering ahead of the meeting. Um, we may have seen a furthering of that, you know, a little bit more momentum or to the upside going into today, ahead of FOMC. Um, but the fact that the Sweden's lift rates by a full percentage point uh, maybe gave people pause for thought. And, um, you know, and I think the market's just going to sort of sit in a fairly tight range now until tomorrow. Um, but so, you know, I don't think that the Fed's going to deviate from three quarters of a point. You know, I don't think inflation um, has, um, um, you know, scared them too much. You know, remember, inflation is stubborn. 
right? And the Fed knows that. It seems like the market doesn't know that. And it seems like every time there's the slightest hint of uh, positivity, the market can't wait to rally. Uh, and conversely, as soon as the slightest um, um, thing that, you know, kind of undermines that positivity, it gives back all those gains immediately. Um, you know what? Interestingly, a few months ago, a few weeks ago, I posted a... Um, a podcast at the weekend. I said, "Hey, this is what I'm listening to. It's Odd Lots uh, by Bloomberg. It's one of my favourite podcasts." And they were talking about. Um, God, I'm rambling this morning. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> uh, they were talking. They were interviewing a very famous um, chartist, technical analysis chartist, who's been around the markets for years and years and years and years. And she was saying. Um, that what she was kind of expecting, she was reluctant to make any sort of predictions, but what she thought we could be entering, this is a, was about two, three weeks ago, was a period of volatility, quite extreme volatility in the markets, similar to post-dot-com crash in the early 2000s. And that's where the market will sort of rally, you know, sort of 10% and look like it's about to sort of, you know, it's put in a base and take off only for it to sort of give up those 10% gains, you know, and then sort of start to sell off and look like it's going to make, you know, sort of new lows, only for it to stop and turn. And we get caught in this sort of like 10 to 12% um, um, a range of, you know, where the markets are like trying, everyone's trying to sort of like beat, sort of pick the bottom, and beat the turn, um, but they're weak hands and getting flushed out. And I feel like that's what we're seeing a lot of at the moment. You know, we saw that kind of strong rally going into the FOMC, the FOMC uh, into the inflation data. Inflation data comes off. We've seen a strong sell-off uh, in the last few days. Bounce, of course, yesterday. You know, wonder what will happen with the FOMC. I think you know we might get some sort of relief rally at a three-quarter point. Um, obviously, a lot depends on what the statements and the, are coming out of the FOMC. Um, you know, but will it be enough to sort of sustain a full bull rally? I doubt it. You know, I mean, it's just going to be sort of, you know, react and then sit and wait and see what the, the inflation number does next month. I mean, that's where we are, right? So anyway, Sweden lifts interest rates by four percentage points, surprising the markets. Oil um, oil prices up, but expected Fed rate hike paints bearish picture. So this was just a, a small commentary on what OPEC were doing. So they weren't meeting production targets, which, you know, gave a small bid to oil yesterday. Uh, let's read this. Oil prices ticked up on Tuesday as OPEC and its allies kept uh, producing less than their quotas, but were headed for a fourth monthly decline ahead of an expected further US interest rate hike, which may curb economic growth and fuel demand. So again, you know, oil is going to be in a holding pattern ahead of the FOMC tomorrow. Um, what have we got here? Okay, so this is just the uh, looking at the Forex Live headlines, which we like to do. Similar to the, the uh, Reuters headlines, there wasn't really much in the way of uh, data release or uh, fundamental news breaking to drive price overnight. Um, they just had a, I just opened up a couple of um, uh, market commentary uh, pages, early gains have evaporated and equities have tilted lower in European morning trade. S&P 500 futures are now down 12 points or 0.3%. Remember, this is 438 GMT. So this is you know quite some time ago, about seven or eight hours ago. Um, and then where are we? Uh, bonds. So, you know, we'll take a look at a bond chart at the moment. If there is ever a time to be short, you know, the US Treasury is, it's been the last few weeks, it's been in nothing but a beautifully smooth downtrend as yields have, have just grinded higher. Um, again, you know, it's sit and wait for tomorrow. Looks like rate market is still sliding with more bearish hawkish Fed ahead of the main event tomorrow. Yields are continuing to push higher on the week with two-year Treasury yields hitting 3.97%. So when yields go up, bond prices go down um, for those that are new to trading bonds. We'll take a look at the charts uh, in a moment. And then um, Bloomberg market wrap is um, you know, stocks decline as traders' eyes supersized Fed hike. You know, again, you know, like wait and see. Let's sit and wait and see. Don't expect too much from the markets today. Be very careful with your trading. Let's have a look here. Let's have a look at some charts. 
Right, so what we got here is the uh, E-mini December contract. Remember, we rolled last week, um, and here's the one hour, the daily in the one hour. This is how I like to set up my view on the market. Um, we can see here that, you know, obviously we're firmly uh, in, in the downtrend still. Um, well, we're kind of forming a wedge pattern down the bottom here, aren't we, really, when we look at it. Um, let me see if I can expand this, because now... There we go. But we had this uptrend forming that was broken here, uh, and then it bounced into this level of support, and and it's actually traded off quite nicely from this um, uh, uptrend market became a, from a level of support to a level of resistance. We can see there's a nice setup there for a short yesterday. Um, but what we have here, really, I think, is a market that is going to struggle to break this level today. This sort of thirty-eight. I've got a data box here. What was that low? 38.46 and a quarter. Um, it's going to struggle to sort of break this sort of, you know, 38.46 and a half to 38.46 level of support ahead of the FOMC. And I think really what we're looking at is a level of resistance. sitting in here. So we're going to be stuck in this range today, I think. Be careful on your trading. It's going to be choppy. Um, you know, I think those traders out there that are keen to uh, place trades mean reverting will do better than those looking to capture trends today. And my friend Albert's a good trend trader. Watch out, Albert, tomorrow, today. Um, things are going to be a, a little, little tricky today, going into today. And then here's the hourly chart. You know, there's not much really to pull from this. It's been a little softer over the last few hours. Again, you know, I think this is a, an out. Let's have a look at that trend I've put on there. Where's that back from? Okay, so it's from here, slightly below that mark there, off there. Okay. I was trying to figure out what was going on there because I didn't think there was a trend line. Right, okay, so what we have here, you know, like we've had a small double top on an hour uh, and broken this little level of support. So it's trending off, but it's come back down into this area of consolidation. You know, it might spend a little bit of time here. If it manages to catch a bid today, back up towards here, but very unlikely to break these uh, these hourly highs. And if we manage to sort of break through here, back down towards this first level, of um, uh, support here around sort of 38.75 before sort of dropping back down to here if it breaks that. I think, you know, we're looking for this kind of this trade today. As I said, it's going to be, I think, quite ahead of tomorrow, um, barring any sort of like, you know, breaking headlines, of course. Uh, the NASDAQ here, you see this actually set up for a very nice short opportunity here. This level of... Um, this level that was a major level of support here didn't really do much through here, but as you can see, boom, 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 held in support here, broke. Oh, that would have been a nasty test of that and wiped out a few shorts. But you know, it's it created a, a level of resistance here. So um, you know, I think that's fairly significant for us today. I can't see it going above there. And again, you know, I don't really see it sort of breaking these sort of levels. So, you know, stuck in this type of range today in um, in the NASDAQ, in the bonds. Why you'd want to be long bonds in a chart like that, I don't know. But I do get the psycholo psychological challenge here, right? Is that, oh, it's come off. It's come off so far, so far. Not, I wouldn't say fast, it's ground down. But, you know, how much further can it go is the sort of psycho psychology from uh, the trader here, you know, typically, and uh, they're looking to try and pick bottoms. But, you know, look at the trend. The trend is definitely your, definitely your friend here. And you can see sort of overnight as well, it's, you know, broken any sort of, sort of levels that were uh, support here and, you know, continuing to drift down, fall into new territory. Again, I can't see any significant moves happening today ahead of FOMC and oil. We can see bounce nicely off that trend. So we've got a third point on a, on on that up up trend there. We've got this down. We've again, we've got a sort of a, like a consolidation pattern happening here, 
and then looking for the next breakup or breakdown when it breaks, but it's not going to happen today. Um, you know, I can see this line holding in today in oil and um, and struggling to sort of break this ninety dollars a barrel level of resistance. Finally, gold. Gold is uh, looking very very soft again, breaking all levels of support. You know, it's a holding pattern ahead of the FOMC. Gold currently bouncing off this small trend here. Uh, if it breaks that, looking to get down to sort of these type of levels, I think it's probably going to hold and sit into this sort of level of what this sort of flag or pendant that it's forming here ahead of the decision tomorrow. So that's it. Um, Clinton, and the reason it is unlikely to break the hourly highs because we are unlikely to set a new trend today, plus the head uh, trend line is overheated. I, I agree, Clinton, you know, you're just really sort of echoing my thoughts there. You know, it's very difficult to um, see uh, markets really sort of breaking any sort of significant highs or lows today uh, with lack of, uh, of course, anything can happen in the headlines, right? The, 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 the rate decision could get leaked, very unlikely, but, you know, something big could happen in... In, in Ukraine, um, anything can drive price, but you know, through the lens of what we know right now in terms of fundamentals in the market and the FOMC tomorrow, very difficult to see these markets make any sort of significant move ahead of that meeting. So that's it for, for this morning's meeting. Um, thought for the day from me, um, I just want to encourage you all to head over to our um, Trader Education, Trader Advice and Tips blog, which I know is a bit thin. We're trying to add to it, but it's uh, uh, writing a blog article that has um, a that I you know when I write blog articles, I really want them to have like an impact. You know, not an impact, but at least something that you can learn from. And, you know, I don't want it just to be there as a keyword stuffing SEO article. I want it to be something that, you know, really, you, you know, that brings value to our reader. And um, and writing articles like that is difficult and it takes time. And we want to keep adding to this. Steve and I have set a goal now to try and write at least once a month to this article, to this blog ourselves. So there's at least two articles published a month. Um, but, you know, we are incredibly busy at the moment, so it's making it difficult. But nevertheless, there is a blog here. There's, a, there's an article here on trading volatility. Now, one thing I've noticed is traders are over leveraging themselves going into busy markets. You know, they're, if they're quiet markets, they're used to trading one or, or two lot um, uh, e-mini S&Ps. You know, when the market cranks after, let's say, um, um, FOMC tomorrow or last week after the CPI data, they're still trading one and two lots. You're over leveraging yourselves, right? The markets, when you trade, when the markets get busy like that, it has the ability to suck you in, right? You think, oh my God, look at all these opportunities. I can make so much money here. And, and you know, what you should be thinking of, instead of through the lens of, hey, there's lots of opportunity to make money, Think through the lens, there's lots of opportunity to lose money, right? Start there. And that will enforce, uh, a, 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 a um, hopefully enforce a behavior where you'll take less risk, you'll reduce your size. There are more opportunities in those markets. There's no doubt about that. But you take advantage of those opportunities with smaller size because the volatility, you will need to widen your stops. And I can't tell you the amount of times in the last few months I've had traders complain to me about, you know, how they were right, but, you know, in terms of what they believe the direction the market was going, but got stopped out before the position went on side. And that's because their stops are, they're not giving that trade enough room to breathe and their stops are too tight because what they're trying to do is they're trading with too large a size. You know, widen your stops, reduce your position size and, and, and take your position in the market with, you know, like micros instead of minis or if you're trading four minis, 
take it with one mini give yourself more opportunity and you know and you're going to get like there's going to be you know things are going to happen quickly in these markets right and you're going to get stopped out quickly don't get angry and try to rush back in you know there are volatile days create a lot a lot of opportunity right so it's take your time trade small give your stops give slightly wider stops but you're looking for slight of course when you widen your stops you're looking for larger profit targets right remember that so you know if you're if your stop is think of it in ticks not in cash right if you think of it in cash it's very hard to sort of do but if you think of it in ticks if you're normally stopping yourself out for 10 ticks you know and, and looking to take sort of 15 to 20 ticks on a move look to stop yourself out at 20 ticks and look to take sort of 30 to 35 40 ticks on a move right when it's volatile when these volatile markets happen and i'm saying this because tomorrow afternoon you know uh tomorrow morning my time tomorrow afternoon in europe we're going to have the fomc you know the markets are going to get volatile traders are going to jump in and i'm going to start people start seeing people blowing their accounts like that right and we see the same behavior all the time people rushing in we see people taking positions ahead of this do not take positions ahead of tier one data like this. You do not know what's going to happen. Your stops will get run. That's another thing I just want to quickly mention because liquidity dries up. Liquidity on the bid and offer dries up in volatile markets, right? Who wants to work an order resting in the order book when you don't know what the next five minutes is going to look like? So what happens is, is traders say, okay, um, I'll put, I'll buy this here and I'll put a stop in here and that will protect me from breaching the daily stop at trade day. And what happens is the stop gets triggered, but it doesn't get filled where they want it to be filled because of the lack of liquidity. And that stop gets, you know, gets run, what we call gets run. So if you don't know how a stop order works, I implore you to go over to our free education and have a look um, at our lessons on it. But in brief, a stop order because is a market order when it's triggered. So if you're working, uh, let's say you buy 24s and you're looking to sell two at 20 on stop, that order stays in the order book until until 20 is trade, right? So until somebody else trades 20. And when somebody else trades 20, your market or your order to sell two at 20 becomes a market order. So it's sell two at the next best available bid. So if there's only so if only bid for 20, 20 lots, so it's 20 bid for say 25 lots, and someone sells 50 at market. They're going to sell the 20s, which is going to trigger your stop. But remember, they've still got to fill the balance of their order. So they're going to hit the 19s. So you're going to end up hitting 18s, right? And that's what happens in uh, when the markets are really thin. Stops get triggered and they get run. And that's why people find it very difficult to risk manage their positions. So be careful. Be very, very careful. Don't have positions going into these big numbers. Don't be tempted to trade in the first sort of 30 seconds when, you know, there are, you know, there's algorithmic trading happening. There are markets that there are systems that are digesting the number, putting it through quantitative models and executing large trades in milliseconds, microseconds, and sometimes, believe it or not, even in nanoseconds. And you're competing with them at that point. Wait, see what the market's going to do. Look for your opportunities. Be patient, trade small, and you'll be fine. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you. This has been James Thorpe for Trade Day. Um, I'm back on Thursday, potentially. Steve's back for tomorrow. Quiet day today. Be careful and, uh, and certainly watch out tomorrow. Have a great trading day.